Hey everyone, I'm Purge and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be playing another digital board game. This time it's going to be Lorenzo Il Magnifico. This game is a worker placement game and the physical version of which is actually quite well liked. However, the digital version has been criticised somewhat by players of the physical version because the UI is quite different to the physical game. However, as somebody who's never played the physical version, I'm perfectly fine with the UI and I actually like the game. It's good. So, before we get into that though, I just want to take a moment to thank everybody who's watched, liked and commented on my recent videos. All the um, comments have been really nice and supportive and it's made my comeback really smooth, I have to say, and it's motivated me to just carry on making videos, so thank you very much for that. Anyway, let's get on with it. So we're going to go new game. We're going to do a two-player game today against an easy AI. I know the easy AI has become a pattern with me, but as it's the first video I'm doing on this game, I want it to be a bit of a teaching game, so I'm just going to keep it on easy AI. Um, over here, you can see, play with leaders. Leaders are powerful allies that grant special bonuses once befriended. Now, leaders is a mini expansion that you can play with. We're not going to play it um, for this first video on this game. However, we will play with it at some point. Basically, there are uh, people that um, you can befriend once you get certain... Uh, certain if I could speak, once you get a certain amount of resources, you can um, befriend them and then they'll give you benefits for basically the rest of the game. Um, also, we're not going to choose our basic income. Personal bonuses to find the basic income of harvest and production actions. We'll get to what that is in a minute, but we're not going to change it. So, let's get into it. Okay. Now, as far as worker placement games go, this is a game more on the complicated side of things, so bear with me on this. There's a quite a lot of resor resources, there's quite a lot of things going on, so... Um, okay, let's, uh, let's explain the basics. So, as you can see here, you've got spots, there, like council palace, barn, workshop... You've got all these uh, all these like columns here you can pick stuff from, or you can have like a city, you can have an artisan, you can have a chapel, uh, you can support the bishop. Um, you know, fighting heresies, that kind of thing. Um, all of these actions you can take with these, your, they're technically your family members. In the story of the game, they're your family members, and they're actually dice of different values. Now, the dice values are actually important because... You can only use those dice to take a resource that has um, a matching dice value or if uh, you can actually have over the dice value as well, that's okay. But as long as it's at least the value, then you can actually use it. Now, for instance here, if I wanted to take this artisan, it would be, I would need a die of three with a value of three now which i've got here if i didn't have a value of three i could use a lower dice value and i could use this purple resource here servants each time you add a servant to one of your dice it increases the value by one so you can actually um they're very useful i have i i gotta be honest so however every time that you take a a resource, a again, a character, a territory, building, etc., adventure from one of these buildings with one of these three dice. You can't use one of those three dice again in the same column to take another resource, and the same goes for your opponent. So let's say I went here with um, my um, three die here to get a city. That means my opponent couldn't actually use any of these three dice that um, they have to go on this column and take a territory as well. Except 
you can use this pur right, purple um, gray die right here, the zero die. You can actually use that die to go in these like same columns, but you'd obviously have to use servants to take it simply because um, it's always going to be zero. So these are territories right here. These green ones are territories. These are characters. These are buildings. And these are ventures. Now, they all give different benefits. Let's actually try and click on one. So let's say I wanted the city. Right here, it'll give you a breakdown of what it is. It'll cost me... Um, actually, it won't cost me anything because the territories don't cost you anything. So I could grab... I could use my like um, three die here, grab the city, and it'll give me right away three gold right here. And whenever you satisfy the activation value of this card during a harvest, gain one council privilege. And I'll get to council privileges um, in a second. Now, I've already explained servants. You have also you have gold, you have stone, and you have wood. Gold, stone, and wood are used to pay for characters, buildings, and ventures. As you can see here, the little three flag here that's yellow that's gold that's a gold cost um you have a gray flag here stone cost and you have a brown flag here which is a wood cost also you have a military which i get to which i'll get to in a second which you have to pay sometimes to get uh territories down here you can go to the market um, if you go here with a value of uh, one on your die, you can uh, you can get five gold. If you go here, you can get five servants. If you go here to the barn, this is the harvest action. You need to have at least one die, a die value of one to actually use this. And when you do, you get, let's see if I was going to do it. It says the benefits. If I was to do this right now, it would give me a wood, a stone, and a servant. However, you can make this harvest action way better if you start taking territories so for instance that harvest action would give me the basic income income but it would also if i used a six die right here it would also give me a council privilege or if i pick this one it would if i use a six die it would also give me a faith and a stone Faith to I, faith. I'll also get to in a second. Same if I actually use the workshop for the production action. These pertain to these buildings right here. So at the moment, I would get a gold and um, one military. If I was to get another building right here, I would also get with a value with a dice value of uh, two. I would also get um, the ability to change gold into faith, like so. So right here is the council palace. Now you can use a one day um, right here to get a council privilege. Now a council privilege is our resources that you can choose. Now you can either choose a wood and a stone, two servants, two gold, two military, or a faith. That's what council privileges do up here. You can visit the church now this is kind of important so this track right here is your faith track the red resource is faith now every time an era goes past which is basically rounds um you can either um appease the church or or don't now and you give up your faith to do so now if you do um if you do nothing happens you're fine if you don't actually um reach the amount of faith it says you get excommunicated and you get a penalty so in this case whenever you gain servants either from an action or an asset you get one servant less if you are gaining servants from multiple resources you get one servant less each that's pretty bad and as you can see here era two players who don't reach four faith before the end of era two will get this excommunication 
so each round you skip your first action at the end of the round when all players have done all their actions you can finally recover it and place your last family member that's not too bad and era 3 players who don't reach five faith before the end of era 3 will get an excommunication at the end of the game you lose minus one victory points for every wood stone gold and servant you possess that's really bad we don't want that to actually happen um yeah these little um markers right here are straight up victory points these little like uh, numbers uh, around a shield in a shield should have victory points so um and the blue resource here as i mentioned before the blue resource here is actually military points now um for instance to get this venture here the bishop support the bishop i have to already have um i have to already have four military and the military truck is down here and then i have to pay two military to actually get this um or i could just pay resources so it's in this case because the military is on the right and the resources are and the other resources are on the left i can either pay the gold stone and wood to buy the, like, to buy it or i can pay the military it's up to me so enough explanation um anything else that comes up i'll explain in the game so my first so for my first action what do i want to do um you need a six die you get a council favor so if i get this i can use my three die on it i get a council favor in the harvest action and I get straight up three gold. Hmm. Or do I want two military and a stone? Hmm. Um, as you can see, the ones highest on in the columns need a seven die to grab. Obviously, that's not possible, so you have to use servants in that case. Let's see. Um... So I want to venture and get three victory points, a council favor, and two military. It's quite easy to parse what you'll get from these um, from these resources just by looking at it. So, um, whenever you take a, okay, so whenever you take a building from towers, decrease the value of the tower slots by two. You also get a discount of one wood or one stone. On its cost that's really good if i was going for buildings it's quite interesting in this game because you can use multiple strategies like there's no one strategy that actually works which is one of the things i really like i mean if i wanted to like do a territory heavy game i could do that or i could go like um sort of characters and buildings or like um sort of territories and um ventures that kind of thing what do i want i think in this game in this particular game um faith is going to be quite important so because these by the way these penalties change every game they're randomized every game which is um adds a good bit of variety so do i want the military and the servant or three gold right i'm going to go for the military and the servant this is the monastery territory i'll get that like so. So as you can see here, it's down here to show that I have this one territory. And if I click on the barn for the harvest action, it's now two actions. It's my basic income of a servant, wood and stone. And it's also the monastery I just bought. And if I use a die, if I use a six die, I can also get a faith and a stone. So for instance, if I pick my four die because there's obviously greater than one i'll get the woodstone servant if i however um oh it's not showing me that i can use servants because i've already taken my turn this turn so i have to end my turn i'll show you on the next turn so my opponent has taken a venture so okay so if i then click on the four die i get that action but if i use two servants to make it six this one pops up and i also get the stone and the faith so all in all i'm getting 
one wood, two stone, a servant, and a faith. Now, as you can imagine, if I get loads of territories, um, the harvest action becomes really, really strong. So if I'm going to, maybe I'll go heavy into territories this game, or try to. Um, right. So, just to illustrate that I can't go here again with a normal colored die if i try and use my um three die here it says you can't send two colored family members in the same tower so i can't use any of these three uh dice to get this however i can use my gray zero die to get it if i actually end up using three of my servants do i want to do that and get three gold and a favor maybe i'll go really heavy into into this um or maybe no i can't actually do that let's see um maybe not the um that we don't bother getting characters uh Right, you know what? I'm going to go for another territory. I'm going to go for the city. I'll get three gold from this outright, and then it'll add another um, benefit to the harvest action. Now, it's worth noting that this can only be taken um, sort of once per kind of round. So if my opponent takes the harvest action, um, I can't actually take it, which would be really bad. But we're going to... Grab the city. That's what I'm going to do. Make the harvest action way better. And we're going to end the turn. Now, unfortunately, my opponent has actually taken the, the harvest action. So I can't. It says this action is unavailable, which is really unfortunate for me. Now, as you can see here on the UI, if I were to get any more territories, to, for me to get any more territories, I would need at least three military. I only have two right now. And as soon as I get another territory, it can be one victory point. And if I get another one, four, ten, and then twenty. So they do actually add up. So if I went really heavy into territories, which I think I might do this game, it would be pretty darn good. Okay. Right. Let's see. What do I want? do i need three military i could put a die here and i'll get a gold and i can get two military that'll give me four military that'll be actually fine now, i don't have that many resources five gold three uh sorry five gold two stone two wood um oh huh. do i get the servants perhaps Maybe I get the servants before he takes it. And then... Hmm. Okay. I'm going to take the five servants, because servants are always useful. And that means my opponent can't have them. Right. And then I'm going to use my or die right here and then take the two military so i have four military so i can keep on getting territories again for the next round right okay he's going for the workshop action now because it's actually changed around all the buildings here have refreshed there's new buildings there's that well, not just new buildings, new buildings, new territories, characters, etc. So, I don't want to risk losing the harvest action. I do also want to get more, more territories. Hmm. What's this? Um, for bonus, because this little lantern, the higher up you go, you get another bonus. So if I was to actually take this character, the warlord, I'd get two stone, 
I'd also get three military. And whenever you take a territory from towers, decrease the value of the tower slots by two. So I don't have to have as high a die value to take the territories from now on. That would be really good. However, I'd have to use my um, six die to actually get it. It may not be two bags. I've got a five die as well. I know it cost me two gold. And I'll get a benefit from it. Right. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to recruit the warlord. Like so. And as you can see here, you do get points for taking characters. I've got one point now for that. So now, the die values of territories are too cheaper. Now this one, even this one, as you can see, is reading zero now, which is pretty good. So he's taken the gold. Now, am I going to be really greedy and try and take another territory and then do mm. um i've only got i don't have any faith he's got five faith now i need three faith otherwise i'm going to keep on getting one less servant but that may maybe that can't be helped let's see i mean I could take repairing the church for a gold wood stone. I'll get a faith for it and I'll get five victory points at the end of the game. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, I could use my zero die for that too. Um, I don't want to do that quite yet. Do I? Do I? I get one faith for that. So I get a wood, two stone, one servant. A faith and the council privilege. I'll do this because I'll get. I'll hit the faith threshold and they give me more resources anyway so i'll do that that's good and i'm going to take the faith yeah and i've got two faith and he's gonna, and he's gonna take a they're going to take a um, character and a building. And now I'm just going to use my zero die. I'm going to use my zero die. Oh no, no I'm not. You know what? I'm going to use my two die to get a faith. And that puts me up the threshold for this right there and the turn now as you can see he's actually got seven points right now which um i'm lagging behind a bit so when i zero die i'm going to take this territory the forest and it'll give me right now one wood and whenever you satisfy the activation value of this card during a harvest gain three wood pretty good Okay, we're going to end the turn. And I don't want to... There you go. Okay, so by order of the Hooded Father, you will answer... Wait, will you answer the Vatican's call and support our Hooded Father? If you accept, you'll be rewarded with some victory points in exchange for all our faith. So I use up all the faith and get three victory points. Otherwise, you will keep all your faith but will be excommunicated with the following effect. Whenever you gain servants, either from action or an asset, you gain one less. If you're gaining servants from multiple sources, you gain one less for each. Now, I was gonna support Vatican in this, but maybe I'll keep the faith and not get, not have that. But servants are important. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna support And so, we, like, we both supported it. 
Yeah, it's because we're both at zero now. Right. Let's see what the second one is. Each round you skip your first action. At the end of a round, all players have done all their actions. You can... That's quite bad. I have to be honest. Um, Right. This would be really nice. In fact, to get this, because I get a faith, and the harvest action will give me a faith. Or do I spend five gold on this character and get three faith right now? And get three points because I've already got one character. Hmm. I think that might be worth doing. My die values are so high though. No. Three. I make four. Day two day actions, two night actions. Can I make four faith by then? Maybe I'm gonna have to just do this. No. No, I don't know. I don't think so. Right. So we're gonna use the one on one servant and get the Hermitage. That will be useful. I can do one faith back. Like so. Right. Now, I definitely want to get more military. And what's funny is this will give me, if I get soldiers for six cold, Wow, I can't afford it. But it would give me six military and five points if I get this territory. Because I need more military. Um, yeah, and it would give me enough military to get more territories. And he's already taken. Okay, how about this? How about this? I... Do the harvest action with my six die. Um, okay, it's telling me I can actually use servants when I don't actually need to. But if I do, if I do the harvest action, and so I get because my harvest action is really good now because of all my territories. Four wood, two stone, a servant, two faith, and a council privilege. I'll do that. Very, very nice. And as my council privilege, I'll get two gold. Like so. I get two gold, so now I got seven. Okay, he's taken that character. Taken that. Um. And now, I'm going to use a four die to hire the soldiers and get the military I need. Um, okay. So now, it's opened up this space for another territory. Now, because I used my grey die here, I could actually get another territory. Oh no, it would cost me three gold though now, because obviously it, like there's an extra cost every time somebody uses a column, a tower, there's an extra cost to it. So I can't do that right now. Um, hmm. Do I want to just take a faith so I can satisfy the church when it comes? I could go to the workshop and get two golden faith. Is there any point in doing that? Or maybe even... Take the servants? I'll take the servants, actually. We'll take the servants. We'll worry about the faith um, next turn. He's taking the harvest action. 
Now, I'm losing pretty badly right now, but all my points will uh, come at the end of the game, hopefully. <laughs> so, right, right. So we absolutely... Hmm. Two servants and a stone. One gold. I need 18 military for that. Hmm. Well, I kind of want another territory. And I, then I want to do the harvest action again. If he takes the harvest action... That'd be really bad. Um... We're going to use the Conquer the Dukedom. We get gold. Yeah, okay, we get gold. And we get another benefit to the harvest action. Okay. We're going to take that. We're going to take that. Okay. They didn't take the harvest action, which is really, really nice. So, I'm going to take the harvest action. And I might have to give up on getting no I won't no I won't no I won't because if I do this and then use one servant I then get a massive benefit from the harvest action I get one gold six wood three stone a servant two faith and a council privilege that's really really good right and what do I want I actually need to get more military because I need five more military to get my sixth and final territory once you get six territories that's it you can't get any more once you get six buildings you can't get any more and that actually goes actually that goes for um characters and ventures as well i'll get the military so now i'm at 15 military Okay, let's see. Right, I need 18 military, and maybe I can try. Um, for one more faith with my zero die, and that way, or do I save faith? No, because I could have, I could have faith I need by next, at the end of next round anyway. No, I won't. I'll go for the two military again. Go for the two military again. So now I'm at 17 military on the end of turn. Like so. And... That's interesting. For bonus, two stone, two military. You can take a territory from towers as though you were using a family member of value six. You can still use servants to increase this value. Well, it would be nice, but considering I can, I can only get one more territory anyway, there's probably no point in doing that. So, um, yeah, a captain is nice, but no. What's the, um, scholar? Oh, the buildings, which I'm not even going for this time. Um, increase the value of all your harvests by three. That would be great to have, actually. In fact, increase the value of all your harvests by three. Um, that'd be really, really nice, because then I can use a lower number of dice to get more benefits rather than trying to use like um six days and all that kind of stuff so i'll recruit the peasant it cost me one uh servant because obviously it's a three die and i got a two die so we'll do that do i want it yes i will we both did now my opponent's got quite a lead on me Hmm, we'll see how this pans out. Now, I absolutely need one more military to get my last 
territory. Hmm. What are we going to go for? Well, the obvious thing is to go for the council privilege because before I take the harvest action, I do want to get my last territory. So I'm going to use my um, zero die with a servant and get my two military. Like so. Like that. Oh. That's annoying because he used um, one of his normal die, eight dice, and uh, his non gray dice. And now I can't take. Oh, I can if I want to pay the three gold. Um, that's interesting. So I guess only, it is only for you. I do apologise. That's a bit of wrong information then. Um, I thought if you use like normal days, the rules are you can't use the column with a normal die unless you use the grade die. But obviously that's just for you and not your opponent. The only thing your opponent does is give you an extra cost of three gold. But I'm going to have to do it um, because, because um, I need the last territory. So we'll do this because I'll get three victory points like right now, and every time I do the harvest action, I'll get a victory point and two stone. And I also get a wood as a bonus. So I'll go for the marble pit. There we go. There we go. Okay, so he hasn't taken the... Um, I can use it, or I can use my um, bonus. Now, obviously, because I've got this character here, the peasant, it's it's turned my um, one die into a four die. So if I had more benefits that would give me three or four um, dies, I would I would have actually like much more benefits for the one die. However, considering the other ones are five and six, it's not giving me the benefit. But um, I do have a six day. Now it does look like a pretty dark situation because my um, opponent in Virtual Point is doing much better than me. However, at the end of the game, I'm going to get 20 for territories at the moment, three for characters, five for ventures. So we'll see what happens later on. So I'm going to do the harvest action because it's great. It's great for me right now because. Now I'm getting, for one harvest action, I'm getting one gold, six wood, five stone, one servant, two faith, a victory point, and a council privilege. Now, that is really, really strong, and it may give the false impression that or you always want to go for territories, like, in every game. Um, that's not the case, but one of the like, one of the good things, one of the really nice things about like, um, Lorenzo, Mag Lorenzo Il Magnifico is that um, you could go for multiple strategies. You could you could actually go for characters or um, buildings or ventures all the way through or any combination of either. It's just a really nice game because um, you don't have to stick to one winning tactic. You can use multiple. So anyway, let's do the harvest action. Now, what do I need? Let's go with gold, shall we? We'll go with gold. Not two faith. Maybe I should have actually gone with the faith. Maybe I should have actually gone with the faith. Hmm. Because I have two faith now. Let's... Okay, so I've got 15 military, so I can do this. If I spend 8 military, I'll get 4 faith, so I'll more than have the requirement for the last round. Because we don't want that. Um, we don't want that penalty. We don't want to lose victory points. I'll get 8 victory points um, at the end of the game. 
And I will actually um, still be ahead of my opponent in military, so I'll still get the five points for the military. I'm going to get this um, venture, Sacred War. This seems a no-brainer to me right now. Right. Okay. Just pick the territory. Now, it's obvious to me what I do is... Because I, I can't get any more um, territories anyway, so I have to take the Harvest Action because the Harvest Action for me is really, really good. So, if I use my three die, it's the equivalent of a six die because of this character I took, which is great. Actually, what is the Noble? Actually, oh, I don't have enough gold. Hmm, that might be really good to get. By God, I, I have to do it. I can't risk losing the Harvest Action. So, we're going to go Harvest Action. We're just going to need a three die because, again, our peasant, um, our peasant character that we picked up earlier gives us plus three for the Harvest Action. So, it's like using a six die. Again, we get all these benefits. Really, really nice. Like so. Now, what do I want to take? Do I take the military again? Just to make sure I stay ahead and maybe I can use it for another venture? Hmm, we'll take the military. We'll take the military again. Go back to 13 and the turn. Right. Let's see. I can again. These are obviously useless to me now because I can't use heritage anymore. This would be really nice. A three die, being two victory points for each territory you possess. So that'd be like another twelve victory points because I got the max amount of territories. I kind of have to do. I kind of have to try and go for the noble. So I'll use my grey die and a servant to collect the five gold. Ten gold altogether. End my turn. Well that's lucky actually because my opponent just took a character which adds three gold to the cost so it, it cost me nine gold now but it's still going to be worth it I think. It's still going to be worth it. Yeah it's going to cost me it's going to cost me nine gold now but I'm going to get um, 12 victory points for this. Really nice. And in fact, it does increase my victory points for characters by three as well. So that was a 15 victory point play then for nine gold. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Now, what am I going to go for now? Hmm. No. But then again, it does give me a ton of resources. And hmm. What should I do for this last last turn? Hmm. Let me think here. If I get another territory, it's more points and I lose I become second place for military, so I lose that five points, but then I'm getting I'm gaining seven anyway. So maybe I don't use the military and get four points, use six stone, four points, I get four military and a council privilege. Maybe I'll do that instead, in fact. I'm we'll good with that. Yeah, we're we'll good with sponsor building the towers. We're we'll good with that. We're we'll good with that. And I pick a privilege. Shall we go? We we'll go. We we'll go gold because we've only got three. But it doesn't matter now anyway. Um. Okay. Enter. 
and I'm definitely gonna yeah support because I don't want to lose victory points. Yes. That's one last turn. Okay, game is over. We'll see. I got twenty for territories. Oh, was it? We'll go over in a second. Resources. Oh, and the winner is, but before we do that, there you go, I won 94 points to 60, 20 for territories, my opponent got 4, um, my opponent got um, 10 for characters, I got 6, I got 17 for ventures, he got um, 1, yeah, I got 5 because I had the most military, they got 2. And I got 10 resources, and he got 0, because I had 53 resources. At the end of it, they had 4. So, the winner is... Me! Lovely Chubbly. There you go. And there's a chart... Oh, it's like the same thing. Um, there you go. Confetti. Great stuff. I won the game with 4 points to 60. So there we go. So folks, that was Lorenzo Il Magnifico. I actually really like it as a worker placement game. I think it's very good because there's so many resources in the game and uh, quite a lot of ways to use them. It it gives way to multiple tactics to victory. I really, I really do like this game. It is actually on the more complicated side of worker placement games I've played. It's not the most complicated one, but it's up there. It's up there and I do really like it. So... There you go, folks. If you like this video, please like it, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I shall see you next time. Bye for now.